I'll wait. Let's I've go! all done it. I can yell. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. My name's Kevin Kreider, Korean American adoptee. And uh, my story starts all the way back in grade school when the teacher asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be? Me? I wanted to be a lawyer and I became one. You wanted to be a lawyer. Did you want to be a politician when you grew up? No, I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. You wanted to be a stand-up comedian, awesome. Well, I wanted to be a white guy. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, self-hatred's real. When you don't see enough people that look like you in a positive light and media movie politics, and all you get are the Wing Chang Chongs, the Bruce Lees, that's all you see. I grew up with a lot of self-hatred. I had no self-worth, no esteem whatsoever. And I remember when I asked my first girl out, and she was white, and I said, hey, do you want to go to dance with me? And she literally said, I'm not into Asian guys. <clears throat> so I figured, well, I'm Asian, I might as well just ask another Asian girl. What's up? <laughs> I tried to be a little bit more smooth. And I said, hey, you want to go on a dance with me? You guess what she said? I don't find Asian guys attractive. So I thought something's wrong with me. What is it that... Asian people aren't seen attractive in the media. You know, I, I thought that I would end up alone for the rest of my life. I felt isolated, alone, loneliness, and loneliness has every cause for depression, type two diabetes, and suicide. It's all correlated in the latest studies. And I was alone. I was Korean, but the Korean culture didn't accept me. I wasn't white, but I was promised the gifts of being white because I had a white family. So for a long time, I saw my own kind, my own race, as something that was holding me back. But when I started to get on the jokes, I started to really not like the person I was becoming. But fast forward a little bit, I see my first Asian role model. His name is Daniel Liu. He's like super tall for an Asian guy, right? You hear that a lot. You're super good looking for an Asian guy. And I said to myself, wow, I'm going to be a model now. Because I heard those comments. Those were the best things I ever gotten in college. You know, um, they're really short normally. <laughs> it's all I got. Those are called microaggressions. They just keep eating at you eating at you and you can't talk about it because you get marginalized then because well you don't have it as bad as other races well you're not dying of cancer so I thought it wasn't something I could talk about go to New York try to become a model modeling has its own racism in it I found that I couldn't get the castings I wanted so I thought I'd go to Asia and when I went to Southeast Asia I thought I would be embraced because I'm Asian but the first things they told me is, you look like a slave worker because you're tan. They also told me I had a worse shot of modeling because there's a hierarchy of beauty. Straight up to my face, they said, white people are first, half Asians, and white are second. They call them hapas. Korean Americans, they're third. I didn't really feel good being in Southeast Asia after that. So I came back really even more isolated, depressed. The Asians don't even see me as something. I'm nothing here. So what would I end up doing? I can't talk about it to anybody. Turn to drugs and alcohol. Lots of medication. I tried almost everything under the sun because I thought something was wrong with me. Fast forward 2013, get so depressed. I lose my hair from alopecia areata. It's a stress-induced hair loss. Got off all the medication, got sober, started to work on myself, got into nutrition, medicinal, like nutritional, naturopathic, I guess you would call it. And then I decided, I don't know if I really want to live anymore. I have thoughts of suicide. So I decided to do this crazy thing. I didn't even know how to skateboard, but I was going to skateboard across the country. But you learn really fast when you're about to do 3,200 miles. <laughs> And 
I came back, I thought in the middle of the trip, I was like, you know what, I, even if I die, that's great, because I don't feel like there's anything worth living. But then if I come back, man, man, what an accomplishment, right? Who does that? So that's Forrest Gump. So I come back, and I tell my dad, I want to be a life coach. I want to help people. Then he said, Kevin, you need to have a life. I was $20,000 in credit card debt, barely any hair, no career, no nothing. I wanted to go to Los Angeles, buy a car, become an actor, all those dreams that we had. But then my dad kicked me out of the house in two weeks and he said, you need to get your life back in order. So then I did, I got my butt back into health and fitness, started helping myself out first. Then I was able to do it for other people and I felt amazing doing that. But then I had to really start to embrace my own identity. This whole time I turned my back against Asian cultures. I turned down Asian women because they hurt me so much in the past. I wouldn't even date an Asian woman. Actually, when I'd go on a date with an Asian woman, I'd be like, I'm not normally into Asian girls. You ever hear that as a guy, right? You probably got that once in a while. Not normally into Asian guys, you're an exception. <laughs> felt good for a while, but then you realize it's the glass ceiling. So when I, learned it, when I learned to really embrace who I was as a Korean American adoptee, as a man, as an Asian man, and I could do that for other people, that's when I got the same thing in return. I started to get more confidence in myself. I started to build my self-esteem. I started to embrace myself. I started to elevate other Asian Americans. And that's what I believe needs to happen now. We need to elevate ourselves. There's so many times that I look towards white people to validate me. We can still do that today. You know, I mean, I used to walk around with a white girl, I think it was like my Louis Vuitton bag. <laughs> but when I stopped wanting to be another race, that's when I started to really love who I was. So I stand right here changed person, wanting to actually embrace my own culture, my communities. And I want the same for everybody else. But I also realize we have to elevate ourselves. We can't do this alone. But if we're always looking for another race, another thing to make us feel better and to build our self-esteem, we're never going to make it together. Because I tried. I tried for a very long time, and it didn't work. The only reason why I'm here is because I did all those E's, right? built my self-esteem, I braced myself, elevated other people. So yes, representation is super important because when I was growing up too, I didn't want to be an actor. Who would want to be an actor when all you see is Makasa and the Mr. Miyagi guy? It doesn't make me feel good about myself. I'm sure it didn't do that for you. And we all know this, the media controls the mindset. So it's super important for more positive role models of all colors, shapes, sizes, who embrace their own identity to be running for candidate, to be in the movies, to be the lead role. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks.